My friend, we have some huge news on this episode of TFL Talking Trucks. Yes, and it has to do with electrification. Yes, because there's a new all-electric truck in town. Yeah, and that would be the, what, GMC Sierra? EV. But it has a longer, more complicated name, my friend. That's what I thought. So I was Do, hoping do you want to hear its get, full name? I was hoping you would. 2024 mm. GMC Sierra EV Denali Edition 1. You forgot? Okay. Yeah. Is there a 1500 in there or something like no, that? No, we don't oh, need Oh, thank goodness. No. <laughs> One last thing. We don't wow. need the 1500 because this is just their electrified version of the Sierra lineup. I mean, there might be more differentiation coming later in the future. Right. Uh, but this truck is a 2024 model year that's going to go on sale uh, later next year uh, or at least be orderable later next year. And I had a great opportunity to interview the chief engineer of this truck. That's right, you did. You kind of went somewhat hands-on. I like to yes. say somewhat because you were right there and you got to really look at it, which is great. And we have some fantastic photos of the vehicle as well. So we'll be able to answer some questions in this video about it. Totally. But I want to do more than that uh, because, yes, we have an interview with Nicole Kratz. Yep. She's a chief engineer for the project. But I want to put it in context, this truck. I mean, you know, how does it relate to other EV vehicles and specifically pickups yep. on the market right now? Uh, how does it compare and when is it going to be available and what is the cool stuff about it? Is this related? I'm sure it is related to the Chevy Silverado EV. Yeah, absolutely it yeah. is. Um, so before we dig in, let's thank our supporters at patreon.com slash TFL car. It's been a really busy week and a lot yes. of our Patreons have actually reached out to us more so than I think we've seen in months. So this is good stuff. Yeah, totally. So first of all, I want to thank a few people and then we have a couple comments from some of our supporters. So first of all, Kara Burns, Dave... Andrew Chafer, Pavnit Sai, and Patrick Stone King uh, all have support. These are new supporters just within the last week. Thank you, guys. Without your support, we could not do what we do. We really do appreciate it. Were there any questions from those, uh, yeah. Patreon? Yeah, well, so I already spoke with Kara on the messaging. So, Patreon.com slash TFL car is a great way to just get a hold of us in general. Mm -hmm. Yes, we read all the comments on our videos, our podcasts. Or as many as we can. Yeah, and our websites too. But because this is kind of your our most prized supporters mm -hmm. are on Patreon. <laughs> so we will immediately answer you or answer you in the format that you're seeing right here. But regardless, you will get our ear and we will respond to you. Yeah. And it, it doesn't have to be a question. It, it could be some feedback. Mm -hmm. If you're not happy with something we're doing or you want to, us to do something else. Correct. Uh, review a truck in a different way or do review another vehicle. So you can let us know there as well. So is that one of the comments you got? Uh, no. Oh, good. But I just want to kind of generalize and make it more open, right? It doesn't have to be a comment about purchasing a truck, which is what Kara is doing. Yeah. Uh, which we can discuss a little bit later. Sure. But, uh, so what do you think? So we have an interview uh, that's showing the truck, mm -hmm. the new Sierra EV. Um, but before, before we play that interview, how about, well, you asked me about the Silverado EV first. Right. How about we start there? Well, let's talk about the Silverado and maybe well, let's talk about some numbers too, because I think as cool as any of these trucks are looking, I think they're starting to look really cool. I, yeah. I'm really getting excited about these new ones. Um, there's a couple realities we have to cover, which is, you know, everything from range and power and, and charging. Exactly. Yeah. So let's start with that. So first of all, this is related, as we said, to the Chevy Silverado EV, right? Yeah. And, and it's kind of interesting, at least to me. Um, this whole play between Chevrolet and GMC, uh -huh. because for decades and decades and decades, these trucks have been related. Yes. We're talking about even mid-sized trucks, Colorado and Canyon, Sierra and C uh, Silverado, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, at one point in time, it was so obvious that they were related that all you could tell in terms of differences were the badges. Yeah. And only recently, over the past, say, 20 years, have they been making them look a little bit more, now a lot more different, a lot more different. But you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but when I asked the question, it's almost like they want to separate them further. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I was like, I asked them. Uh, the GMC team, oh, is this a C, um, Silverado as well, the chassis? They're mm -hmm. like, well, no, we changed it in these ways, and it's different styling. So they really are kind of, I, I sense that they really want to separate the brands, so to speak. Different exhaust package, right? Uh, yeah, this has a quadruple exhaust. 
Uh, I can't. I can't help it. Sorry, guys. Okay. Electric truck. So it's a skateboard platform. Yeah. Ultium battery. Exactly. Okay. Which is similar to, if not just like the Silverado, and also probably a slightly less beefy version of what's underneath the Hummer, the GMC Hummer. Yeah, exactly. And basically, the way this truck, the new Sierra EV, relates to the Hummer, and the Hummer actually, we have a long-term vehicle in our fleet, which is the Hummer EV. Yes. Uh, the way this relates, it's a longer, a little stretched version of mm -hmm. that chassis, and a little bit narrower, because yeah. the Hummer, what is it oh. known for? Off-roading, right? And it's super wide. Yeah, super wide, be because it allows for a little bit more articulation, right, as mm -hmm. far as the suspension is concerned, and also shorter wheelbase is also good for off-roading. Yeah. Well, this is a little bit more trucky, so to speak, because it's longer, has a longer bed, also has the old school avalanche style bed. Ah, so light or similar, I'm sorry, GMC, similar to <laughs> the um, Silverado EV pickup that's coming out, it will have a mid gate that folds as an option. Exactly, okay. uh, which everybody calls avalanche. I but know, I know, I, I, I do too. I try not to, but I can't help it. And also the kind of the flying buttress. So... Uh, this is a weird design in, or interesting design element of the Silverado EV and the Sierra EV where kind of the bed is kind of almost one piece with the body, right? Mm -hmm. There is not a hard line, hard separation between Even the bed. Even a fake, fake line, which some yeah. automakers have been doing. but No fake lines. Yeah. I, I think it's really good looking, personally. I think it's a good looking truck. It's just those wheels, guys, you're not, you're not going to believe how big these wheels are. 24s. 24. I, I told Andre before the video we started shooting, they really might as well go to a wagon wheel. Basically, whatever you're putting on an old stagecoach, you could put on there. <laughs> it's just getting ridiculous how big these wheels are getting. Yeah. And that's so much rotational mass, all that metal and everything. Uh, it's just nuts to me. But regardless, it still looks good. So good looking truck on the outside. And it looks like are those steps integrated into the vehicle? It looks like they're almost part of the platform. Well, yeah. So th these are not. You're talking about the side steps. Yeah. They're, they're not uh, like folding, yeah. so they don't don't disappear and then reappear. Uh, but they are basically hard mounted to the chassis, which is kind of similar to what the Hummer is currently doing as well. Right. That um, makes sense. And they don't um, inhibit ground clearance very much. I mean, they're they're pretty good. Yeah. So. Is there a front frunk trunk key? Yeah, there is. There is a frunk area. So it's very similar to the Hummer. So, And we'll talk about pricing. We'll talk about all these things, Yeah, um, so of course. Maybe we should talk about the differences between the Chevrolet and this one, because that's the first question I would have. You know, Are there differences that yeah. are performance-wise? Yes, there are some. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there are. Well, first of all, like we said, they share the same kind of a chassis, the uh -huh. ultimate chassis uh, they share. So twin motor, mm -hmm. one motor in the front, one in the back. So it's not like the Hummer system, which has triple motors. The Hummer uses two motors in the back and one in the front, right? Right. So, but listen to this, and we'll go over this in more detail. But the GMC Sierra is differentiated because it has more power, 754 horsepower and um, 785 pound-feet of torque in the Sierra, and the Silverado EV RST, that's that's kind of the they're, performance they're, yeah. edition of the Silverado EV, has 664 horsepower and 780 pound-feet of torque. So the torque is almost identical, but they're separating the GMC by giving it a lot more power. That kind of makes sense, right? Well, it's more premium brand, it's right? It's more premium brand. You're going to get it more, you know, kick for your dollar, so to speak. Um, and it also looks like, just from the outside, it does look like it's a little bit more of a premium truck, just in general. But maybe it's just the way they designed it. So what about the, the competition? Yeah, so let's talk about it while we introduce this interview, yeah. right? So obviously Ford F-150 Lightning is currently on sale. Yep. Uh, they also offer luxury editions of the Lightning, including the Platinum Edition. Um, so Lariat is the truck we had for uh, several months in our fleet. Yeah. Lariat... Used to be kind of a mid-grade, but it's also transitioning a little bit more luxury, mm -hmm. right? And finally, their platinum truck is their premium Ford F-150. And that's for like 90 grand or something like that, Yeah, right? and it's now starting at like 95. So, so it's, it's approaching Denali pricing, That's basically. exactly it. So it's it's almost at $100,000 is what we're saying, and that which is just ridiculously yeah. expensive. But then again, it's just it is what it is in the market, right? And there's also the Rivian truck, the right. R1C. That's also on the market right now. That's also being sold. Um, and 
has some similar, well, performance figures. Maybe pricing is a little bit similar, mm-hmm. but the Rivian is quite different because, of course, it has four motors, not two. Right. Um, it has air suspension, kind of like the Sierra, height adjustable. But it, the Rivian is much smaller footprint. Yeah, the Rivian is much closer to a midsize truck versus these, which are really, you know, full, full size. size yeah, really, really big in terms of their dimensions. So it is different. Um, and I would imagine that the Rivian, you know, obviously the tech is going to be different than General Motors tech, but, um, and I'm pretty sure that these have Super Cruise, am I right? Yeah, totally. So the, the premium Silverado will have it, and so will the CR EV. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so how about this? Let's, let's go uh, to the detailed interview. Okay. Let's find out from the chief engineer. From the person who actually engineered this thing. Yes. Let's find out the details, and then when we come back, let's discuss um, some other tidbits that I've learned. Okay. I'm here on location for TFL Talking Trucks podcast with another brand new truck from GMC. This is the 2024 GMC Sierra EV Denali Edition 1. It's a long name, but I also have the chief engineer with me. Hi, I'm Nicole Kretz. I'm the chief engineer for our Sierra EV Denali Edition 1. Yes. So in this video, we can maybe walk around the truck. Absolutely. And you can kind of tell me, uh, you know, what makes it unique, what makes it special, because style, I think, I mean, it's all GMC. This is all about what a Sierra EV would be. And for the GMC brand, the bold front end and the styling cues throughout the entire um, hood and side of the truck just scream Sierra EV out loud. It lets customers and um, folks on the road know that we're driving an EV. It's got some inherent you know, feel of the Sierra brand, but certainly has set itself apart in styling from the ICE counterpart. Yeah, so uh, I'll grab the camera in a bit and kind of show some details, but you've got, of course, the signature that looks very GMC, but also a lot of other elements. We've got a ton of front end lighting in this truck. So a perimeter lit shield here in the front that you can see um, probably better at night. There's lots of lights on this right now and Mm -hmm. a lit GMC emblem. So really bringing out that GMC um, EV persona out of the vehicle. These lights right here are actually charge indicators. So they'll only be lighting while we're charging in the charge port and they show the level of charge that you have in your battery as well as the fact that you're actually charging. These are our headlamps and um, this actually is lower than we would normally design um, trucks and this is just to get us a safer view on the road and then there's also a fog lamp further down below to really just give you that ultimate front end lighting experience. These are the daytime running lights and they do have animation when you walk up and walk away, kind of showing off the signature lighting for the Sierra EV Denali. And obviously these headlights, I mean, they comply with all the regulations. Oh, absolutely. So you don't blind people, but also have a lot of coverage. Yeah, you won't blind people at all, but the coverage is really great. And with our redesigned all new architecture, we actually have an improved forward down vision along with where where the headlamps are, so it makes a great nighttime driving experience. Sweet. Well, let's take a look from the profile. And um, GM also has the Silverado EV truck. Right. Are the dimensions of that truck similar to this? Overall dimensions are very similar. So we're using the Altium architecture we've talked about before in terms of um, building to the scale and quickness to market that we can. So the Altium architecture with the battery pack over 400 miles of range is what we're using. It's similar to that Silverado EV. The overall dimensions of the vehicle are very similar to that. However, as you can see, the body design the um, overall design of the vehicle is all unique to the GMC Sierra EV Denali. Mm-hmm. We do share some chassis and propulsion components, and that's really to allow us to build at scale quickly and get lots of vehicles to market, including the future models that we mentioned with the AT4 and the Elevation in 2025 model year. I gotcha. And let's open up a little bit so we can see the inside. Absolutely. But like you said, so twin motor setup. Yep, front and rear. Yeah, and then air suspension and uh, four wheel steering. Four wheel steering, including the um, GMC Hummers Crab Walk. That's a really great feature for our GMC customers. The Sierra EV will continue to bring Crab Walk to our customer markets. Gotcha. So, in the back here, we've got a lot of space for a lot of things. First of all, over six foot passengers fit in the inside extremely comfortably. And then, of course, we have our Multi Pro Midgate, which allows us to fold down either a 60% or 100% side 
total cargo carrying flexibility. This is a 10 foot, five inch, I think it was, um, paddle board. We have 10 feet, 10 inches of space that you can fit across into the cab and still have a rear passenger driving along with you. Yeah, as you can see right there, 60-40 split. Yep, 60-40 yeah. split. It also folds fully down if you want, and you can also take the glass out. It stores in the truck when you do that, so you have it with you if you ever want to um, put it back in during your drive. Okay, well let's focus on the interior a little bit more and then we can talk about some other specs. Like, Yeah, so the Sierra EV is really packed with technology, but also with the Denali. It's about um, materials and the type of materials that we use to really invoke the luxury that the Denali is known for in terms of that model. You can see these quilted seats. You can see the open pour um, wood veneer on the top and then etched in is the Denali over there on the IP. And we've got um, four Sierra, the largest ever center stack screen at 16.8 inches. Right below that, there's a wireless charger that's actually charging through the wood sitting there. Huh. And that wireless charger moves forward to get out of the way for you to get anything you want stored down in the bin, as well as just out of sight, out of mind while you're driving. Still integrates with Android and Apple projection phones on the screen if needed, but we really are um, quite excited to offer the first sort of for Sierra um, folding under or sliding under the, the center uh, cluster. And then the cup holders also slides. The uh, cup holders will slide out of the way as well. You uh -huh. can go ahead and do that. Can you, can, I, yeah, yeah, I'll do that for you. <laughs> well, this is a, like a show truck. It's so a I don't show wanna... truck, that's right. So the um, cup holders can fold up underneath here. This will slide forward and it gives you total access to all of the storage that's inside here, as well as a bin that is removable and allows you to put anything in there in front that you don't want to go all the way down to the full storage. So it's really about versatility built in every part of the vehicle that we could could possibly imagine to make sure that everything folks want to carry with them is easily storable. And of course with an EV we don't have the engine in the front so we've got lockable um, weatherproof storage in the e-trunk underneath the front hood as well as being able to use this mid gate and um, a tunnel cover is standard as well with our 2024 Sierra EV Denali Edition 1. Okay. And so that'll keep um, the elements out of your use of the mid gate as well. So you can still have long items but still weather protected. Kind Absolutely. Of. Yep. Okay. So we talked about power. So acceleration about what? Four and a half seconds? Under four and a half seconds. Under. Yep. Okay. It's 754 horsepower, 785 pound feet of torque. So in our max power mode, it's going to be an amazing, exhilarating drive for everyone. And um, tell me about these wheels. Well, I mean, we already talked about four-wheel steering. Yep, so 24-inch wheels, I mean, these are really um, cool uh, wheels. They're also designed aerodynamics as well. Uh -huh. So it's in order for us to get our uh, 400 miles of range out of the truck, we do things with our designs that integrate awesome um, design elements, but also things that work well for us aerodynamically. Yeah, and then the tire is fairly aggressive. This is a fairly aggressive okay. um, tread. This is a show tire. Okay. It's an all-terrain tire tread. What will come with the production model will be more of an all-season type tread. Okay. Um, but again, with the AT4 that we have coming out in 2025, you'll get a two-inch factory lifted truck. It'll have a more aggressive tire when it comes with it. And then our elevation trim as well will be available in um, various range Ranges, various price points, various options so that um, consumers are covered when it comes to the Sierra EV. Gotcha. And I see the charge port right here. So let's talk about charging. Yeah, let's talk yeah. about charging. Yeah. We have a 350 um, kilowatt DC fast charge capability. It's 800 volts. So we get 100 miles in 10 minutes. And what's really compelling about this for the Sierra EV, specifically for the Denali Edition 1, is that not only do you have over 400 miles of range, but being able to get 100 miles in just 10 minutes means you're running in to get a coffee and you're not sitting having a family meal for long periods of time just to get extra range to get on the road. We've got 9,500 pounds of towing capability, so it's really important to be able to do a quick fast charge uh -huh. and then get back on the road. Yeah, I gotcha. And the other thing that this offers is off-board power. So if you don't need that 400 miles of range to drive and you want to use it for um, powering your devices, whether it's your campsite, a job site, or your home, we actually offer um, the 400 mile range pack is capable of uh, charging a home with their essential services for 21 days. 
That's yeah. That's, yeah, it'll support um, refrigerators, lighting, heat pumps. Really important in California where they get brownouts, as well as you know Florida with all the folks that are you know really suffering through Hurricane Ian's of after effects. Okay, and I haven't seen this uh, part here in the bed mm -hmm. where some of the outlets you're showing here. Yeah, so we've got a 240 volt outlet as well as 420 volt outlets. So underneath the um, covers there, you'll see two outlets, not just one. Mm -hmm. And um, this is not the final production version, but this is really showing what the capability of of this rear bed sort of cargo area um, can be in terms of having a little storage underneath it as well as being able to reset anything if you go over the maximum kilowatts for or maximum wattage for each of those outlets. The infotainment screen will also be telling you how things are going when you're um, using those charge ports. So whether you're using it in the center of the truck, in the front, or in the truck bed, you'll know which outlets are using what kind of power so that you okay. can make sure you don't ever exceed the capability of each of the outlets. And yeah, like you said, the outlet in the front, inside mm -hmm. the truck, and also there's going to be an accessory here. That's right. So there's an Altium accessory power bar that plugs into your charge port that gives you additional outlets. So with that plugged in, you get a total of 10.2 kilowatts and 10 outlets. We like to do everything in tens. <laughs> I can see that. Okay. So let's open a little bit more sure. of the truck here so we can see from this side. So first of all, you can see that we never um, have any of the cargo ever hitting anything in the seats or anything that's an unfriendly, uh, friendly, excuse me, a friendly surface. We want all of the cargo that you carry to be on the back sides of things where you won't see any scratches or anything um, marred up at all. Obviously for a Denali with the luxurious interior that's being designed, it's a modern interior, but it still has a lot of luxurious appointments. That's a really important thing for us to make sure that we protect our seats and other things from. Yeah, makes sense. And then here you can see a better view of the 11 inch cluster. Um, it's a multi, the heads up display, excuse me, is 14 inch. It's a multicolor 14 inch heads up display. The truck is full of technology. We've got our Altify architecture in here, which means that we can do continuous updates. Customers can choose to upgrade their vehicle post purchase with new features. So you don't have to just keep purchasing new vehicles every year to get new features. And then we also have um, Super Cruise, which is our um, hands-free driver assistance technology, mm -hmm. and it is including trailering for our Denali. I can kind of see the display on the steering wheel. Absolutely, there. yep, yeah. that's where the Super Cruise um, colors show and to make sure that you know you're in Super Cruise and driving. Sweet, and I see you put the trailer brake controller, which is of course important. We talked about 9,500 pounds yes. of towing. So this is everything that a full-size pickup truck should be. It's everything that our Sierra has been known for in an EV. And we know that people trailer, we know that people t um, haul things, they have payload needs. So the versatility of what a full-size truck Sierra owner uh, has come to know, or any full-size truck, truck customer has come to know, needs to be packed into this vehicle, and it is. We do virtualization of switches, but we do it smartly. So things that people use yeah, um, regularly, like the HVAC controls, like a trailer brake controller, those are all physical switches in the vehicle. And then we've got the center stack screen where you can actually drag and drop apps into an app tray that leaves them persistently on the screen. So if you're used to using an application more often, then you'll be able to have a button that's more of like a quick go to, jump to button. And then of course the screens themselves allow us to have um, virtualized buttons. The crab walk button will be virtualized as an example. Max power mode will be in the my mode areas and that'll be virtualized as well. So there'll be like a special tow mode as well, I'm assuming. Absolutely, yep. or, And or like all-terrain mode? Is yeah, I don't have the specific names, okay. um, but there's for sure uh, off-road mode and there's a, um, a tow haul mode for sure. And then my mode allows you to change steering, ride, et cetera, individually to individualize it for your own um, desire. And the Denali will have its unique suspension, right? I mean, air suspension, height adjustable. That's right. So the Denali, um, the Sierra EV Denali Edition 1 will have our four uh, corner air suspension. It's got rear independent suspension. With the Ultium architecture, the center of gravity allows the vehicle's um, center of gravity to be really low. So the ride and handling dynamics and characteristics of this EV pickup are really amazing. It envelops and it, and it creates a much more refined drive than what a full-size truck today in the market is. 
That along with rear steer really makes this truck nimble in terms of driving. The turn circle is amazingly um, small and so you can get into tight spaces, mm -hmm. you can get into um, parking spots very easily. So I think this is a really good vehicle not only for a traditional full-size pickup truck owner, but it is also a vehicle for someone considering wanting the versatility of a pickup truck but not totally sure they want that bigger drive feel of a full-size truck. This really allows people to maneuver and um, ride along and feel really refined in the drive experience. And of course you have all the cameras and views as well. Like I can see, I think there's a camera down here in the front, there's a camera behind the cab, right? There are camera um, views for sure. I think yeah. there's up to 14 um, camera views available on our Denali. Mm -hmm. And um, inside the screen, obviously with that large of a screen, you're gonna have really great views of each of the camera modes. You can see the trailering, you can get close to the hitch so that it's easy for you to um, attach your hitch, uh, your trailer to your trailer hitch. And you know everywhere in terms of overhead views for parking, I drive a Denali today pickup and I love the 360 view and I love that overhead view because I know exactly where I am in the parking spot. Mm -hmm. And also like what another feature I love is you can see the tires, you know, you can switch views so you can see front and back. Absolutely. You can see basically all four areas of the truck during trailering and not trailering. So it's really important that you can see everything around your vehicle whenever you need to. And this really allows that. Yeah. And I can see definitely, you know, very unique style touches, right? Absolutely. I mean, even kind of the cut behind the cab and the wheel arches, all that stuff. It's a unique body side for GMC for the Sierra EV. So we're, this is all um, new sheet metal, all new design for the GMC Sierra EV. You see touches of Denali in the wheels. You see touches of GMC in the um, wheel open molding lamps. Mm -hmm. And this is everything about making an EV for the Sierra brand and bringing it to um, various customers, starting with our Denali model in 2024 and then moving on to other models in 2025. And it's early 2024 is this edition one, right? Early calendar year 2024 is when the um, Sierra EV Denali edition one will be available. Sweet. What did we not cover? I mean, I think, oh, the price. So 107,000. I don't, yeah. 107,000 is for the edition one. 107,000 is the edition one. There'll be other um, options and, and models available that obviously different ranges, different price points, different availability. So really a Sierra EV for everyone. Mm -hmm. This truck happens to be the first one that is fully loaded. Everything that we can imagine putting into the full-size pickup truck we're doing first. And then we'll be offering other models with other uh, vehicle ranges as well as options later. Very, very cool. Well, thank you for spending the time with me and, and showing this truck. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. We love it. And we're back. Yes. So what did you think? Well, for one thing, the interior, um, it looks like a truck that you could buy today. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. look like there's, there's anything in there that doesn't look like it could actually not go into production. So the truck looks like it's ready for production from my perspective. Um, I am surprised that they would not let you even physically touch the truck. Yeah, so I could lean in if the door was open. Mm -hmm. I, could, I, I could not sit in the truck. I could not open and close doors or open and close tailgates. So stuff like that, because it's kind of a one-of-a-kind show vehicle right now. Right, and so they had to have handlers come over to take care of that for yeah. you. Which is understandable. I mean, technically speaking, this thing is almost priceless because it really is the, 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 the first of something that doesn't have components ready for it yeah and if i like broke off the door handle like you know other people have to film it yeah you know it has to go to like tv shows and sh other which is different... why you should have broken off the handle and busted mm -hmm. it up a bit before or a scribbled tfl truck Tr was here yeah like uh, with my nail right somewhere yeah yeah, yeah that i should have been done awesome. that. yeah but a lot of the components i'm seeing in here look like they're right out of the regular gmc pickup truck that you could buy today um, yeah, like the steering wheel looks very familiar, right? Right. It's a little bit unique, of course. This is a new electric truck. Uh -huh. And the interior overall is full of tech, like you saw. I mean, you know, they say it's now 16.8 vertical inch vertical infotainment screen in the middle. Nice. Uh, gigantic. But they're but, using physical buttons. I love that. Yeah, the lower row of buttons is physical. Those are like toggle switches. Yeah, and they're no, also they're... using that knob that Ford first introduced. Yeah. 
that's on the screen, but it's also controlled. It's a and physical technic- thing. So technically, it's a screen within a screen type thing, and then the knob itself rotates it. It's it's not what you think it is, but it works. Uh, it yeah. works in forward. I, have, I haven't been able to use this one because I, w- I wasn't touching it. Yeah, but, but I'm pretty sure that it'll be similar tech to what Ford is using. Yeah. And, and then I'm looking at a lot of the buttons right on the left side of the steering wheel, and all of those buttons come straight out of GM's you know parts bin, which is good because uh, at least... Trailer brake controller? Yeah. Thank you. Right? Yep. Uh, other buttons like for controlling the tailgate, controlling the frunk, uh, controlling some of the suspension components and uh, parking brake. Exactly. Yeah, standard GM aff- affair there. Now, from my perspective, and, and uh, it's going to be hard for those of you who are listening, but it looks like the center console has a large opening on the bottom of it that looks like it's almost like a pass-through. Am I correct, or is, am I wrong? It, it's not a complete pass-through. This, this image kind of hides something That's what I was in the wondering. shadow. But there is a pocket. You know, you could put gloves or okay, maps or something like that. Okay, so there is a pocket like there, but there's not, it's not a full pass-through. Right. Um, but what's really cool also is that you can move the cup holders out of the way and the little charging tray uh-huh. for the phone out of the way. Oh, you can and move there it. Is, there is space in there where you can store things. Ah, uh, I see. So, so that so will open up. Yeah, so it opens up, and of course, the center console flips up and out of the way, and there is more storage inside of it. Um, so they they thought about those items. So ninety five pound, ninety five hundred pounds of towing, mm. like they announced, okay, was decent. But here's what I'm trying to get to: these truck. Uh, okay, so they're introducing the luxury versions of yes. them, right? But at the end of the day, and I think this is where the viewers and listeners are too. They have to be trucks. Yes. Right? So towing. Okay, it seems like they're taking care of towing because 9,500 pounds of towing in a luxury truck, I think that's pretty good. It would be great if there's any range attached to it. Yeah. The range is a whole different story because we'll have to test it. Uh, The range story is such that, um, and they didn't state the numbers of kilowatt hours for the battery, Mm -hmm. but they said it's basically like a Hummer. So I will take the liberty of assuming that it's about 212 kilowatt hours. That's huge. Which is a huge battery. It's also heavy, right? Yes. We, as we found out. Well, 9,000 pound Hummer, yes. Yeah. So we don't know exactly how much this truck weighs, but I'm, I'm sure it's probably a little bit less than 9,000, yeah, but not by much. Yeah, so, so it's, it's logical to say that it's going to weigh a lot more than its gas brethren. As far as uh, at least the 1500s are concerned, yes, exactly. right? So, but they didn't really state the payloads. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's to be uh, determined. The Silverado EV payload is listed at about 1300 pounds, which is not, that's not very as good, good as I'd like. No. Ford is better. Yes. So, listen on, uh, so on related to F 150 Lightning, uh, Ford Platinum, which is their luxury version, or at least not the Platinum, but the extended range battery, right? Right. 1,800 pounds of a payload, yeah. which is a now a usable number. That's a news, yeah, it's much better. Um, and, of course, 10,000 pounds of towing for the F-150 Lightning, up to, if, if it's configured correctly. And then charging, right? The Ford, as we found out, going to Alaska and all these things, uh, can charge up to, with a speed up to 150 kilowatts. We've seen that speed a couple times, mm-hmm. or at least about, actually... We saw 170 kilowatts charging speeds. So Ford is a little bit sandbagging maybe um, some of these numbers. Perhaps they are, but still, at least we were able to do that. But GM, of course, wants to go higher, right? And they're talking about 350 kilowatts, like Which, the Hummer. Exactly. The Hummer is right now the fast, you know, it has the large, yeah. Hard. Yeah, the quickest charging rates. By, yeah. by a pretty good margin. Well, you know, Kia and Hyundai yeah. are also up there, but you not know, with their charging rates. They're, like a 280 or something? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I don't know exactly on yeah. the Ionic or the Kia EV6, but those are quick charging they're, they're cars. still very quick charging yeah. cars. And that's kind of the trick is the fact that if you find the right charger, you can go plug in and get out of there pretty quickly up to, say, 85% of a charge. Yeah, but the reality is such, and Roman and Tommy did a charging video on the GMC Hummer, mm-hmm. is that, yes, you see that peak uh, charging speed, but it ramps down also. So you won't always get those high speeds and you still have to spend sometimes half an hour at the charging station yep. to get meaningful, meaningful charge. And that most likely will be something that we'll have to deal with with these new GM trucks coming out. Okay, let's talk about some other numbers. Yeah, so 400 uh, miles of range, mm-hmm. they stated. So by the way, the Hummer is at 329, right? And they're stating higher numbers here. So I'm assuming aerodynamics will be better. 
because it's a lower truck, right? It's not hard to be more aerodynamic <laughs> than a Hummer, honestly. Uh, so aerodynamics might be a big part of this. And also maybe weight. Maybe this thing weighs less. I'm sure it weighs way less than the Hummer. Yeah. It's, it's not too hard to imagine. Considering all the trick components that the Hummer has and its extra width and everything else, this has to be far more slippery and much lighter. And those two things would contribute to much better uh, range. And they, they did say this, that the aggressive tires that the concept is showing mm -hmm. are not production tires. That makes sense. This is kind of the concept show vehicle tires. But there's nothing stopping you from you going out and buying those tires yourself. No, no. And, and like, it looked really good on this truck, I got to say. I don't know what it is about tires, but it's like, you know, getting a new pair of shoes. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, even though Denali is not technically their off-road model. You know, no, and, and it has really aggressive tires. Yeah, I'm curious to see where they'll go with off-road versions of these trucks with electric batteries and all that. Um, so a couple questions. Um, this is going to be more expensive than the Silverado, no doubt. Yes. So um, as you just saw, uh, $107,000. Okay, let's put it in perspective. Okay. okay. Hummer EV truck, mm -hmm. 110. 11, 12 starting, and ours is 115 with right. a couple of options. Um, the Rivian is around $90,000 reasonably. I mean, yes, there, uh, technically you can order a cheaper version of the Rivian, yeah. but most of them have options. Most sure. of them are loaded up. So ninety dollars to $100,000 for a Rivian is not out of the question. Okay. And that's a sticker. That's kind of a Rivian price. Right. Um, the Lightning, like we said, the Platinum is about 95-ish. Okay. Uh, what am I missing? Oh, Silverado is 105, 105,000 for the RST, which is their most premium currently Silverado. These prices are really painful. <sighs> so, but, but it's, it's once again, these are high-end electric trucks. And so, we know there will be less expensive ones in the future. Yeah, so they did say this. They said the Elevation version will be coming as a 2025 mm -hmm. uh, model. So that's going to be a little bit later after the Denali goes online. And also 84 off-road version is coming too. Wow, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. And also Chevy said the trail bus version of their electric Silverado is also coming. So I'm sure they're kind of, you know, trying to, you know, economies of scale, you know, mm -hmm. using similar features right. uh, of the two trucks. So, what do you think about the placement of the headlights? So you see the kind of the C shape. Yeah, that's a driving light. But the headlight is actually below it. Do you see that? Yep. It's very similar in terms of its distance from the top of the hood as vehicles like, um, oh, like the Hyundai Santa Cruz or some of those where the actual headlight, the real driving are headlight. Are a little lower, right? Are like basically on the bumper yeah. or near the bumper. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is in this case. And then there's an additional LED driving light, I suppose. That's like a fog. Fog kind of, light yeah. on the bottom. Um, well, everybody's going, you know, like most people are usually misinformed and they think that the driving light is the actual, or sorry, that the... Um, the LED signature is actually signature, the yeah, headlight. It's right, not. which it yeah. isn't. Yeah. Um, but it looks cool. I don't know how functional it is. It, it may work. Well, we'll, well have to test it. Yeah. Exactly. Obviously, it passes all the regulations. Obviously. Because it has to, uh, to you know, to be a legal, you know, tr street legal truck. So does it, I mean, one thing that GMC was really good about in, in the recent past is putting a ton of cameras on their trucks. Yeah. Does this have a, like, you know, yeah, it has, plethora of cameras? Yeah, and that's important also, right? And the bed you saw, so once again, folding mid-gate. Uh, you can put something that's ten and a half feet long, if you put the tailgate down, you know, and with that stopper, gate, yeah, and the mid gate down. But then you can only hold two people in it, driver and passenger. Well, if they were showing that surfboard or the paddle board in there, you know, that's ten and a half feet wide. Oh, uh, I but yeah, it yeah. fits in the half of the so space. So you can actually, bed. yeah, because you so have so one split. person sits in the back technically. That's one of the main differences between these trucks and the um, Avalanche from the past. The Avalanche you had to fold down the whole rear seat. Yeah, it was like the, one piece. Right. right. This one you can actually fold down uh, either side. So yeah. that makes sense. Um, I I'm liking this truck. I just it's such a hard thing to. Judge, so, you know, without driving. Yeah, and it's also early days, right? Yeah. So, so now you can kind of tell. So it's pricey. It is, the, you know, but Denali has so much brand value for them. Oh God, yeah. I mean, they sell like more than, I think, in the heavy duty space at least, more than half of the trucks the GMC sells are Denalis, and these are not cheap trucks. No, no. I mean, so the, even from the beginning. 
So I think for that reason, a lot of people are excited. I've already received many messages uh, about, have you seen the new Denali EV? You know, you know, what is it like? You know, what is it, you know, how does it work? So I think there's a lot of excitement just because of that brand. Okay, a couple quick questions. Yes. Uh, can a crab walk? Yes. It's the uh, second crab walking truck. Okay. Because the Silverado, Silverado cannot. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. So this does have the ability to have its rear tires move beyond 10 degrees, I think. Um, and well, yeah, it's pretty aggressive. And the Hummer does really well with you know, parking does. maneuvers. That's actually one of its most impressive things is yeah. how maneuverable it is. Uh, they do not have WTF mode. On the Sierra Denali. Okay. I think that's reserved. What's for the freedom is what they're calling uh, it. I'm sorry. Though. I should have been more clear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this has something they call max power mode. Okay. So it's not as dramatic as that WTF, what's the freedom launch mode, mm -hmm. but it still sh should extract maximum performance from the motors. I got you. And they're saying under four and a half seconds, zero to 60s is capable. So, so it may not be as quick as the Rivian truck because we've tested the Rivian yeah, R1T. It's really, really fast. And it's really, in real life here in Colorado, we've seen 3.5 seconds, zero yeah. to 60s. I mean, technically it's supposed to be lower with the right tires, right conditions, all this stuff. Right. Uh, but I mean, no matter what, these performance numbers are like just insane for the most part. Well, think about it this way. There are a lot of super performance cars out there that can't match that in terms of zero to 60 or even quarter mile. And these are and giant, big vehicles. These are big trucks. Yeah, yeah it's insane. Well, I, I like what I'm looking at. The interior looked really good. Um, t tell everybody the story about the vegan interior part. Well, yes. So I made a boo-boo. <laughs> I made a small mistake in my video. And I said at the very end of my video, I said, oh, this truck has great materials, aluminum, wood, and leather. And several people popped up and said, hmm? <laughs> and they said, no, this is simulated leather. This is not real leather. So, so, and it's not even cold leather. So stop saying that word. Yeah, it's a dirty word now. Yes. But it makes sense. There's a lot of people out there who are trying to be environmentally conscious. And as such, they don't want leather inside their vehicle. They'd rather have it made out of some sort of synthetic and actually, some of the synthetic, the fake leathers out yeah. there, feel even better than... Well, Rivian the, uses some of those materials or their own version of those materials. Exactly. Yeah. And so, at least in the picture you showed me of the interior with the white stitching, which looked fantastic, yeah. that it, it looks like regular leather. I'm sure it's going to be comfortable and, and of it course should be easier to clean. Yeah, and of course, it's heated and ventilated and cooled. You know, all these... All <laughs> For these, over 100 grand, it better be. It, it better be. Yeah, seriously. It better massage you really well, too. Yeah, I better get a great massage with that. Um so once again, the seats do fold down in the back. Is there additional storage options in the back? So there is a little bit of storage underneath the rear seat, but sometimes that space, if you're folding your mid gate and you're actually removing the mid glass, mm -hmm. which pops out also, right. it stores underneath the rear seats. Uh, so the whole idea is you're bringing all the components with you. You don't have to leave a component at home or in your like garage. A, a roof component. Yeah, or so, like that. so yeah. none of that. So if you are storing the rear glass under your seat, then you're losing that storage basically. But you're gaining the bigger bed. Yeah, right? of course. Um, which I is, love that option. Well, the Lightning only has a five and a half foot bed. Right, which is the standard bed. For an F-150, right. yeah. This has, I mean, tremendous volume, voluminous bed. Yeah. And also there's one more thing I wanted to discuss, which is export power. You know, charging other things or exporting your electricity to other things. Does this have the ability to do that? Yes, it does. And I haven't seen it on the Silverado prototype, but I have seen it on this. In the bed, it has 240 volt and 120 volt outlets, very similar to what the Lightning offers. Right. There is an outlet in the front. There is an outlet inside. Um, and also, they're going to provide a dongle that plugs into the main charge port in the back uh -huh. for a total of 10 outlets Jeez. and 10.2 kilowatts of export power. Oh, that's a lot more than Ford. Yeah, Ford is currently... Seven... At, well, cur Ford in the rear has 7.2. Yeah. And in the front has 2.4. Right. But um, so total for the Ford is 9.6. This is more than that, 10.2. Yes. Um, and they did talk about this. You will be able to, if you wire your house properly, uh -huh. to feed your house as well. Obviously, you have enough kilowatt energy. And plus, you have a huge, giant battery, too. Right. If you, as long as it's fa fairly charged, I mean, average houses, and I know this only because of what I look at on my solar bill, um, 
they run between, say, 20 and 35 kilowatt hours per day. On your usage? Yeah. Or, well, that's yeah. that's supposed to be average. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. it just depends on the size of your home and sure, all that. Sure, sure. So if you have a 200 plus kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, that's like seven days maybe. In theory. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to drain your truck completely yeah. to nothing. But also if you're also running all your appliances, if you're taking it easy after a blackout, I'm pretty sure that even with the half battery, you'd be able to run that house for a couple of days. No big problem. Yeah, you wouldn't, so, yeah. It's, it's an interesting. Wow, a lot of, it's a big battery. Yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of the new world, right? Yeah. We have to think in different terms uh, because a lot of people bring up, you know, brownouts and blackouts and the hurricane, right? So all those things are happening, uh, of course, but... We have to kind of adjust our brains, right? S start thinking in um, energy storage on board. It can be useful for other things other than driving, right? Oh, sure. Um, maybe charging another vehicle if you need to. Charging or, up your power tools on your yeah. way to a location or charging a campsite. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So all those things are there. Oh, I wanted to bring up this piece of news also. Um, um, we saw this story, and I wanted to cover it, that replacement component costs. Yes, uh, Roman and I actually touched on it very lightly on one of our videos that we did just recently, TFL Talk, uh, Talking Cars. But it, you're talking about the replacing the rear taillight. Yeah, that just recently came Hummer. up in the news Yeah, yeah last it, week. And a lot of people are running with it and pointing fingers and screaming and bur burning their house down and sacrificing their children and the, the sky is falling and blah, blah, blah. Well, that was um, the rear taillight cost on a Hummer EV mm -hmm. truck, which is obviously low production unit because it's there's not many Hummers being built. Yeah, that's correct. Is uh, the component price is three thousand forty four dollars, which is ridiculous. But also, you have to remember what it is. It's not a regular taillight like a taillight cover. We're talking about something that actually has circuitry attached. It to has it. a computer inside, of it. <laughs> right? And that's because it's yeah. running a series of yeah, LEDs. And it, and it has a, um, also animations, right, where mm -hmm. the lights make different uh, patterns right. and stuff like that. So, yeah, th these things are getting more complicated, yeah. and they will be more pricey to replace. But that's uh, if you go for a fix. premium vehicle. Obviously, they try to find ways of making less expensive versions far easier to maintain. And I am hearing good things from almost every major automaker about future EVs being far less expensive that's including EV trucks in the future. Yeah, to maintain. Exactly. Specifically, yeah. And I guarantee you that this GMC's rear taillight will cost a lot less than the Hummer's taillight. Same well, they'll, they'll build more of them, right? Well, yeah, that's the other part of it. Yeah. So it, it, it is ridiculous. I don't think it's as that big of a deal as some people are saying it is. Because seriously, if you can, if you can afford a vehicle that costs $115,000, you can afford to replace its taillight if something horrible happens. Yeah, maybe you have insurance that potentially would cover it if it yeah. was an accident, right? Yeah. I'd so, so yeah. So, you know what I wish, though? Huh. I wish more manufacturers like GM and others will show us more basic and aff affordable yes, versions please. of these trucks. Because only a handful of people can really afford these trucks, realistically. And remember that some people buy trucks to be a daily worker, which means they have to tow, they have to haul, they have to go long distance. Those are things that these trucks don't do particularly well. So we're hoping that we will see in the future slightly different versions of these trucks that will be far more affordable and hopefully more capable. Yeah, indeed. So, um, And as soon as we can drive these, uh, here's the thing about GM, uh, Silverado, and Sierra. They're not on sale now. No. And they really need to hurry. <laughs> yes. I, think I mean, if they want to compete, really. They're in, over in a year space. behind Ford at this point, and, and they really shouldn't be. This and you know been. who else is not in the market right now? Ram. Ram. Well, well, we're going to be hearing more about their Revolution. That's the name of their EV truck in the very near future. Yeah. So a Los Angeles Auto Show. Right. This is mid-November. Mm -hmm. so we should know a lot more about this truck. Indeed. Um, and also, of course, uh, to Toyota is a big player in this space. Well, even Nissan, if you think about it. Yeah. And uh, Toyota has announced, or they hinted at least, at some electrification news. Uh, but we don't have solid solid news from them yet. Well, the president, Akio Toyota, he is not happy about all electrification. And I, well, I back him on this, but there's a personal belief that, you know, he's like, dude, hybrids are the way to go. And, and also, old technologies coexisting together. Yes. I, that's my opinion. That's what I, and I yeah. agree with your opinion yeah. on that. And Toyota right now is one of the best in the business when it comes to putting together hybrid power uh, powertrains. So... 
he has a point. And this is a whole different conversation for another, you know, for the future. But he, they still do intend on building an all-electric pickup of some sort. And we may see that. We may see one of those with a range extender, which is entirely possible and, in my mind, logical. So we'll see about that as well. And I think Ram may be playing with the range extender idea, yeah, too. Fact, well, they even announced. Yeah. They officially said that there would have some sort of a, a well, range. Well, because they said class leading. They want to be class leading at least in several areas. Yeah. So range extender would be one way to do that, Indeed. I think. Yeah. Uh, which is basically a small internal combustion engine. To supplement the energy, right? That works like a generator, essentially. Yeah. So it's not it's not strained or anything. It runs at 1,500 RPM and just powers up the battery. So we'll see. This, techno- this technology already exists, by the way. I mean, Andre's been using it every day, pretty much. In the BMW i3. Right, which yes. has a little tiny, uh, like basically a, um, a motor scooter. It's a motorcycle uh, two-cylinder engine. Two-cylinder yeah. engine in there, yeah. and it powers up the battery. It doesn't. It's not connected to the powertrain. So anyway, that's a whole different conversation. Uh, but I will say, just wrapping up the Denali, that it, in my mind, m- looks a little bit better than the Chevrolet. This is just my own personal opinion, but I think it's and a little bit more, I don't know, masculine. It's a little bit more meaty. Trucky? And, yeah, maybe? maybe a little bit more trucky. I think you and I agree. We've spoke about this before. Yeah. That you and I, I think, agree we appreciate GMC styling a little bit more than Chevrolet. Just a little bit more, yeah. 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 And it's a personal thing. You, you may love the current Silverado as well. So, yeah. Um, I just want to finish up really quickly with Kara's question. Oh, yeah, and let's comment. Hit it. So, Kara Burns on Patreon um, actually had a very, very long, thank you, uh, description. But basically, they're trying to. Oh, yeah. So. I'm sorry, Kara. I'm not sure. Um, should I refer to you as he or she? So, so they they have a 2008 Nissan Titan King Cab two wheel drive. Okay. Nissan Titan Power. Yeah, two wheel drive. Yeah, and they're um, not. They don't go off road very often. But um, I think she's looking for an off road version. So what we ended up being, um, she's also looking at mid sizers. Mm-hmm. And she was asking about Colorado ZR2, which is Actually, super capable platform. But I said, Kara, do you really need something that capable? And we actually um, ended up on the Trail Boss, potentially. You know, the new Trail Boss the we saw tra- it in oh, Texas. Well, yeah. I mean, I was standing right next to it, falling all over myself to hang on it. <laughs> um, and the Trail Boss is, it is a very capable truck, just like its big brother, the uh, um, the uh, Silverado, if I could speak. Yeah. Um, but the big difference really is that it doesn't have all the the special lockers and all the armor of the ZR2. But that also or the fancy it, shocks. Yeah, it doesn't have any of the yeah. spool valve or anything like that. But it does have off road capable suspension tires. It does and ground clearance and ground clearance. It does have, I believe, a G80 um, ma- uh, mechanically locking rear. And most importantly, it's lighter, which means it probably gets better mileage, and it's going to be less expensive to buy, and it's probably going to be their volume seller. I'm willing to bet that it will be, because it's going to be right in the sweet spot of pricing, which is still going to be ridiculous, but nonetheless, will be a lot more affordable. And it may actually tow more than the ZR2 as well. We don't have those numbers yet, I don't think. Well, yeah, it's... um Obviously, we haven't driven the new Colorado yet, but mm-hmm. uh, some of the numbers depend on how you configure it, right? Exactly. Um, exactly which packages you combine. Because it weighs it down. And um, also, I have another piece of news. Oh, please. Um, um, Kara was asking about the F-150 Rattler. Oh. You know, this affordable uh, um, F-150 package yes. for, for off-roading. It's sold out. Oh, no. For 2023 model year, the F-150 Rattler is sold out. I'm not, not surprised, though. It's the Ford selling out of everything. The Mavericks. I mean, the Maverick is sold out. Like, the, like, the Lightning is sold out. Yeah. The Rattler is sold out. What else is sold out? Raptor R? Yeah. I mean, a, a couple of the Bronco that, that's a limited, I bet you are. limited run yeah. of Raptors, right? So, But I think it's pointing in the direction where you guys, listeners and viewers, want more affordable stuff. Yes. Which is, which is cool. Well, that's right in my wheelhouse. I agree with you guys 100%. $100,000 for a pickup truck makes no sense whatsoever. Hell, $75,000 doesn't make any sense either. So I agree with you guys. And hopefully, I think automakers are beginning to take that seriously. Ford fully, I think they're listening, yeah. Well, that's why they built the somewhat. Maverick. Yeah. And the Maverick is taking care of a lot of those people who don't have the dough for even a Ranger, much less you know full size. Uh, and other automakers are going to be... Pl- jumping in line to do the same thing you watch it'll happen soon enough 
All right. Well, there you have it. I think we addressed most of the questions and comments yes. that, that we've had. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, a lot more excitement coming down the line. SEMA is around the corner. Right around the corner. So is the LA Auto Show. And also Rem Rebel HD truck driving impressions Ooh. are coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. That's right. And don't forget to go to alltfl.com where it's one-stop shopping for everything we do, including our eight channels and our five websites and <laughs> 19 different cars and everything else that we have to deal with. Yeah. Alrighty. So have a great week, guys. Thank you.